Kalau menurut saya seorang ayah itu harus bertanggung jawab dalam keluarga Dalam segala apapun yang terjadi dalam rumah tangga ini harus bertanggung jawab Karena dialah satu-satunya untuk bisa dapat berkembang Kalau tidak punya ayah, anak-anaknya semua berantakan, ente tidak tahu di mana. Sehingga kalau ayah itu, mungkin dalam tanggapan saya, ayah itu terlalu penting dalam hidup sebuah keluarga. Titus is a hard worker. He tried to show from his action how he responsibility to feed the family. I think he tried through the real action. I know that Titus they are sad because deep in his heart he knows that he cannot provide for the children. Saya tidak mungkin diminta di orang lain memang makanan untuk kasih makan mereka sehingga saya tetap mukul. Biar apapun yang terjadi dalam hidup saya, tetap saya mukul untuk supaya mereka jangan lari di orang lain di rumah, diminta makan. One of the great dreams of humanity is to be a part of a thriving neighborhood with safe housing, a stable income, and a sense of community that creates connection and belonging. Neighbor helping neighbor. For many, the reality is starkly different depending on where they were born. Poverty changes everything. If I asked you to write down a definition of poverty, what would you write? Little to no income, no job, homelessness, no food? It's difficult to define. Poverty is complex and about more than just income or material wealth. The World Bank defines extreme poverty as living on less than $1.90 US a day. That's 260 Aussie dollars, or 140 British pounds, or 62 Thai baht, or 12 Chinese yuan. For the cost of a loaf of bread in Australia, a whole family must source their breakfast, lunch, dinner, clothing, transport, healthcare, housing, utilities, and education. 736 million people live like this every day. That's more than double the population of the United States, or almost the entire population of Europe combined. And almost half of that number our children. In the 21st century, how is this possible? Poverty might be described as the complete lack of the means necessary to meet basic personal needs such as food, clothing and shelter. But this definition still falls short. Humans are more than just what they own. They are social, emotional, spiritual and physical beings. Income alone can't tell the whole story. A person's income might be above the poverty line of $1.90 per day, but it still doesn't guarantee their family has electricity, access to a proper toilet, clean drinking water or education. Poverty leaves people vulnerable to inequities like gender or ethnic discrimination, poor governance, conflict, exploitation and domestic violence. These leave a long-lasting impact of shame, guilt, and powerlessness. This is the epidemic of our generation. This is bigger than any pandemic. It is the future of our children. We spoke to Noel Pabiona, the country director for Compassion in the Philippines. This is what he said about how it feels to live in poverty. When they wake up, they wake up with so much hopelessness. 
because whatever they see around them speaks about hopelessness the the, the type of uh, dwelling they have the non assurance that they're going to eat for the day it robs you of hope for the future so you live only for the present you no longer believe that you can uh, you know arise out of your current condition so this is how the poor feels they feel uh desperation they feel resignation and acceptance of their flight they feel physical difficulty from hunger from long hours of work they feel emotional pain because of rejection and discrimination and moral pain because of desperation that they are left with no choice but to do things they are morally against but they have no choice because they need to survive that's how poverty feels no matter the statistics the most insightful definition of poverty comes from those who live it my father was taken away from us and by that i mean he was murdered nothing was the same for me my mother had no job my father was the only breadwinner we moved from where we stayed to a place called naguru kasenke which is one of uganda's largest slums and then i was introduced to our new home which was a 12 by 12 room i looked up on the roof it was a tin roof that had holes in it that was a night that we would stay standing get little buckets placed just where the holes in the roof are and wait until morning a reality hit me that day this was life poverty began to speak to me as a child i felt i was nothing i didn't matter nobody cared to know my name i think the best way i could describe who i was and what i thought is the word hopeless poverty is not just the lack of money the lack of material food and water poverty is in it's deep we recently interviewed alistair sim who works for compassion international in program effectiveness and research poverty is usually described as a condition but i like to view it first as a context in which people live that then contributes to the condition of being deprived um that's why i prefer not to call people poor or call them the poor um but as people living in and with the context and consequences of poverty and these poverty contexts whilst at their most basic level are economic uh they result in multiple levels of breakdowns in the physical cognitive social and spiritual aspects of of human development um so these different dimensions and relationships with and between the different dimensions are very complex and they require deep and community level understanding the multidimensional nature of poverty makes it difficult to know where to start but there have been great strides made over the last two decades that have seen a substantial decrease in those living in extreme poverty with the onset of industrialization and rising productivity the share of people living in extreme poverty started to decrease this was surely one of the most remarkable achievements of humankind but how is this measured poverty is measured by each country's government which gathers data through household surveys of their own population entities like the world bank provide support and may conduct their own surveys Alistair explains why this door-to-door -door data is so important in alleviating poverty. Firstly, it helps us and our partners make well-informed and objective program decisions. Um it helps us become more analytical and aware of our biases and maybe our ideologies and how these do or do not align with reality. Um it, it ensures that we are constantly learning to make sure we stay in touch with our own changing realities and with the wider development sector. And the second main way that research and evidence is important, I think, is simply because it helps us tell the children's stories in in ways that when these stories are all put together, uh they tell the overall story of the global poverty alleviation effort. So, what is the data saying? In 1990, approximately 36% of the world's population lived on less than 1 US dollar 90 per day. But since then, approximately 1.2 billion people have risen out of extreme poverty. This is due to an improvement in productivity, 
material living conditions, improvement of global health, and the expansion of global education that we have seen over these last two centuries. So at the beginning of 2020, 9.2% .2 of the world survived on one US dollar 90 a day. That's still 736 million people living in extreme poverty. Poverty declined during the last generation because the majority of the poorest people on the planet lived in countries with strong economic growth. Then everything changed. The COVID-19 pandemic of 2019 stopped decades of progress in the fight against global poverty. For the first time since 1998, the international poverty line increased. As a result, around 97 million additional people are living in poverty, a historically unprecedented increase. The difficulty of this data is that the work that has been done for decades has now been undone. Industry stopped, jobs were lost, health services were overwhelmed, schools were closed, and isolation impacted everyone. Pandemics are not selective with whom they impact, but they do disproportionately affect those living in extreme poverty. The devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has heightened the effects of conflict and climate change. Let's take a closer look at the Philippines. In the Philippines, the devastating effects of the pandemic were exacerbated with the arrival of many natural disasters. At the end of 2020, the country was hit by one of the strongest typhoons in its history, Goni. The United Nations reports that at least 25 people were killed, almost 300,000 homes were damaged or destroyed, and nearly 3 million people were affected. Two weeks later, Typhoon Vamco followed, killing over 70 more people and destroying another 140,000 homes. The Philippines is a country made up of over 7,000 islands. Its combined landmass is only just bigger than the US state of Arizona. But where Arizona has a population of 7 million, the Philippines has a population of almost 111 million. More than 16% of this population is living below the poverty line, which is over 17 million people. It's a grim existence for so many. Noel Pabiona has been in the Philippines throughout this season of difficulty. You see, living below dollar and ninety a day is already hard. You know what the pandemic did? It deprived these people of livelihood, so that dollar and ninety even becomes zero because they can't go out to uh, sell or they cannot go out to work because they've been laid off. You can't even go out to scavenge. So where would you get your food? So the impact on the poor is incredible. It's terrible. Uh, there is, of course, you know, uh, you just being confined in that small space that you're living in that is cramped in some places. They don't even have sunlight and then you're not even allowed to go out. So, and so for these people, they don't even understand the concept of physical distancing. Why? Because in a small cramped space, perhaps of 20 square meters, there are what, there's what, nine to 11 people living there. Beyond the health factors, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the education of more than 1.5 billion children and youth, according to the World Bank. At least 160 countries fully or partially closed schools. As countries explore the opportunity of remote learning or other creative methods of delivering education, there are the ever-present challenges of accessibility and equity of resources, especially in already fragile environments. Children living in poverty are among the most vulnerable people in their community. Statistically, children are more than twice as likely to be in extreme poverty as adults. An estimated 42 to 66 million children could fall into extreme poverty as a result of the crisis in 2020, adding to the estimated 356 million children already in extreme poverty in 2020. The vulnerability of children is that they're often at the mercy of their carers' living conditions and circumstances. 
in the Philippines, uh, when you talk about poor neighborhoods, it can be a slum, a slum that we minister to, for example, in Quezon City, which I term blacked out communities. Why are they blacked out? Because there's absolutely no sun. It's one slum built on top of the other that when you pass through a narrow pathway, that pathway is also where sewage water flows beneath you. And it's totally black. You can put your hand in front of you. You can't even see it. So you could just imagine how difficult the conditions are without sunlight. They can't be disinfected, but they're already living in a place that were, were bacterial infection and all types of viruses are actually thriving. Children living in poverty are more likely to have lower quality friendships, yelling in the home, less enjoyment in exercise, inadequate fruit and vegetables, worse mental health, lower school attendance, less learning at home, and less involvement in extracurricular activities like sport. Poverty affects all areas of a child's life physically, economically, socially, emotionally, and spiritually. Many of these create a flow-on effect. A child with physical weakness because of poor health or nutrition will have decreased education opportunities. Living in an isolated area, either due to work opportunities or cost, means a family may miss out on public services. Fear of the supernatural may come at the cost of any hope in changing circumstances or paying witch doctors for protective talismans. These different aspects are linked together, creating a complicated web that cannot be solved purely by economic means. For children living in poverty, sometimes their best isn't enough to overcome the insurmountable challenges. Bapak Ya, kak dari kecil kan di bapak yang selalu urus kak. Itu kalau saya di sini saya orangnya melaut, jadi suka ini kayaknya mungkin belum belum bisa. Terus yang kedua yang mesin juga rencananya mau ini tapi mesin ulang-ulang rusak. Karena uang tidak cukup beli mesin baru. Atau bapak pulang tidak dapat ikan atau mesin rusak kayak apa. Kan mesin sering owner tuh kak jadi itu yang jadi bahan pikiran tuh kak. Kan mesin sering owner tuh kak, jadi itu yang jadi pipahan pikiran tuh kak. Su so, kasih belajar jangan ada yang julen dari kecil kak. Jadi kes tau kalau kan ada ikan adik dong harus biasakan diri makan kosong. Jadi su so, kaya apa nggak su so terbiasa tuh kak. Ya maksudnya kak, mimpi tuh pengen hidup berubah tuh kak yang dari bawah bisa ke atas sedikit. Itu yang selalu berharap itu saka. Punya pengennya ya jadi orang yang sukses kak karena orang tua kan su susah pengen anaknya sukses. Kadang kita pikir-pikir kenapa kok Dalam hati saya hanya minta tolong. Ya, cari, cari hasil untuk rencananya mau cari hasil di atas untuk pakai beli alat. Kosong suhu, habis suhu kosong, masih semua bilang apa, sande bisa tak usah pikir-pikir itu. Mungkin ada hari besok.
I think generational poverty uh, becomes a vicious cycle. Um, people living in a poverty context, they, they raise their children in that same context. Uh, and unless their circumstances change, uh, their mindsets become one of living in poverty. And I, I guess the expectations of children don't necessarily change. So all they see and experience gives potentially a narrow view of the world uh, that becomes embedded in their behavior. It's difficult to see a way out. And if you like, the sense of hope can disappear. Um, and remember, lack of hope is not just about an attitude, but it's also about the circumstances. So in order to have hope, you have to see opportunity beyond your own circumstances. And so over time, if you're not seeing improvement in, in the environment and your circumstances from generation to generation, it becomes a, a self-perpetuating situation. The different aspects of childhood poverty overlap and reinforce one another, leading to a cycle that not only is difficult to break, but is likely to carry on from one generation to the next. In fact, child poverty itself is the main reason why poverty continues in the next generation. When you understand people living in poverty, you will understand, number one, the resignation meaning they've accepted the fact that they are poor and that chances are the next generation will be as poor. And this idea is reinforced by everything around them, by what they hear, what they see, and how people treat them, not only outside, but even in their community. There's no one picture that can adequately describe all situations. Without external intervention, Poverty is a legacy that can continue generation after generation. Magnified by pandemics and natural disasters, the cyclical nature of generations means poverty needs the world to work together. Community to community. Neighbor helping neighbor. We need to make poverty personal. And the impact can only be magnified when we all play our part. Poverty is a complex issue and it needs a holistic solution. Waktu dia pakaian mandi, pi sekolah baru dia pakaian. Beta ini ajar dia kalau pi sekolah harus ya beta nak ajar dia begitu san beta senang dia tidak malas sekolah. setengah mati baru dapat hidup jadi beta usahakan mereka kasih sekolah mereka jadilah anak yang baik dan pintar supaya dalam hidup mereka tidak susah seperti kami lagi we invest for children they will learn how to have a good character to change their mindset I do believe that through compassion, Olin will have a strong foundation. She can impact the whole family. I hope through compassion, these young leaders will come from this island. Lebih penting kalau kita atang kita kepada Tuhan, karena satu-satunya kalau kita andalkan Tuhan bahwa itu nanti. Tidak ada lagi beban bagi kita. Kalau kita mengandalkan Tuhan, pasti beban itu hilang.